Hey there, myth junkies and TV huggers. This is Mama Mythos. I hope you're looking to be creeped out because I have made it my mission to fulfill your curiosity with none other than... Da 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 da! Educational nightmare fuel! Beware as we investigate the origins of Yure while showcasing some examples within your favorite horror video games and movies. Let's run, not walk, through the darkness and shed some light on what they are, where they come from, and why they're so dang creepy. This is the first of a series that we are doing for the whole month of October, where we will be covering multiple supernatural beings. If you guys are super into these videos and you want more of them, be sure to let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video. So, what are Yure? Yure are thought to be spirits kept from a peaceful afterlife in Japanese folklore. The name consists of two kanji, yu meaning faint or dim, and rei meaning soul or spirit. Speaking of rei, we kind of have to start there if we're going to explain them in detail. The Japanese believe that everyone has a reikon or spirit. It is said that if someone dies, they are sent to a form of purgatory. They await their funeral rites or rituals to send them off and peacefully join their ancestors. However, if their death was led by suicide, hate, anger, or revenge, they are said to haunt whomever caused their pain. Only then do they become the yurei we fear most. Unfortunately for us, yurei can find their way into the physical world. They then exist on earth until it can be laid to rest either by performing the missing rituals or resolving the emotional conflict that still ties it to the physical plane. If the rituals are not completed or the conflict is left unresolved, the yure will persist in its haunting. The yure is one of the only creatures in Japanese mythology to have a preferred haunting time, the hour of the bull around 2 to 2.30 a.m the witching hour for Japan, when the barrier between the world of the dead and the world of the living is most vulnerable. Yure are more bound to specific locations than the average bakemono, or monster, which are free to haunt any place without being bound to it. Okiku, Oiwa, and the lovesick Otsuya together make up the Sano Yure, or the three great Yure of Japanese culture. These are yurei whose stories have been passed down and retold throughout the centuries, and whose characteristics, along with their circumstances and fates, have formed a large part of Japanese art and society. The characteristics of yurei has surpassed time and contains cultural significance. The following traits are part of the reason why yurei instill such fear in their witnesses and victims. Listen closely as we go over each of them. White clothing. One of the most identifiable traits is the white gown or kimono. These kimono were typically used by priests and the deceased at the funeral rituals performed during the Edo period. Black hair. The hair of a yure is often long, black, and disheveled. Depending on the source, you oftentimes see their hair being used to inflict harm on their enemies, causing restraint, strangulation, and just leaving a creepy calling card or a bad omen. Hitodama Yurei are frequently depicted as being accompanied by a pair of floating flames or will-o'-the-wisps in eerie colors such as blue, green, or purple. These ghostly flames are separate parts of the ghost, rather than independent spirits. Hands, feet, and limbs. The freakiest sight to see is when yurei are distorted and almost animalistic. Their limbs are outstretched on either side of their bodies, hands and feet flat on the ground or ceiling. <laughs> and sometimes they are just limp and hang loosely. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to sip on a tall glass of nope. So now that we have covered the hair raising details, Let's dig a little deeper into the types of yure. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, yure have categories. These are defined by the circumstances of their death. Onryo, vengeful ghosts who come back from purgatory for a wrong done to them during their lifetime. Ubume, a mother ghost who died in childbirth or died leaving young children behind. 
Gorio, vengeful ghosts of the aristocratic class, especially those who were martyred. Funayure, the ghosts of those who died at sea. These ghosts are sometimes depicted as scaly, fish-like humanoids. Gorgeous. Zashiki Warashi, the ghosts of children, often mischievous rather than dangerous. Earthbound spirits, sometimes of a rarity among yure, but these spirits do not seek to fulfill an exact purpose and are instead bound to a specific location or situation. Okay, so I have creeped you out to the point of no return. How on earth will you be able to defend yourself? Well, I'll tell you. Exorcism. The easiest way to exercise a yure is to help it fulfill its purpose, one way or another. You serve to satisfy. Traditionally, this sometimes means avenging the yure against its murderer, uniting its endless love and passion for whoever wouldn't give it up when they were alive, or finding the remains and giving them a proper burial and ritual. How nice! On the other hand, if you find yourself haunted by an onryo, aka the vengeful spirit that would prefer to just end you, the emotions of the onryo are particularly strong and they are the least likely to be pacified by the latter methods. Like many monsters of Japanese folklore, malicious yurei are repelled by Ofuda, holy Shinto writings containing the name of a kami or god. The Ofuda must generally be placed on the yurei's forehead to banish the spirit although they can be attached to a house's entryways to prevent the yurei from entering. Because who the hell would want to get that close? Alright, alright, I'll hurry this up and just tell it like it is. My favorite yurei. As a young child, my first encounter with yurei was with Lily from Shadow Hearts. This instilled the heart-stricken fear I had after hearing her story in probably the worst voice acting I've ever heard, but also the most convincing. So Lily sacrificed her pretty voice for her father's gruff voice. The only way to get it back was to kill him. Every night she would wait at his bedside holding a dagger up to his throat, but just couldn't bring herself to do it no matter how much she wanted her voice back. Her father went out to sea to get her some rare fish to eat and he never made it back. Until his remains washed ashore and he dragged his dead flesh to the door of their home, and he wanted to fulfill her wish and finally let her take her voice back. She still wouldn't do it. So she drowned herself and became a Funa Yure, endlessly seeking to cause death to villagers who had a nice voice. If you want to hear the whole story, I have a link in the description below. However, it will not fulfill you the same as playing it yourself, in the dark, meeting Lily for the first time to the very end of her existence when you defeat her in battle. What about you guys? Do you have a favorite yurei? Let me know in the comment section below. You guys, I seriously have to binge watch cute adorable puppy videos and maybe frolic in a field chasing rainbows after the making of this video because it was really a wild ride. Nightmares and research and finding all the nitty gritty bits for you guys to savor, but you know, I enjoyed every scary minute of it. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I'll see you all in the next video, and thank you for letting Mama break down the mythos.